Hey Otters, it's Ethan with Student Housing and Residential Life, coming at you with another video for Reservation Days. Uh, today we'll be going over the actual first part of the Reservation Days application. Uh, please note most of the items in the application are either the same or very similar to the new student application, so I'll be going over the main changes for our returning students. If you want more information about the items I'll be briefly covering, please watch the new student application video or feel free to contact us about it. Uh, but anyways, let's get into the application now. Uh, of course, you'll be able to find the application on your My Housing dashboard, uh, which can be accessed from your student dashboard. So uh, I'm already logged in, so I'm just going to go ahead and find My Housing right here. Click on that and it should take me to my My Housing portal. Uh, mine's a little cluttered right now and will look different than yours, but navigate towards the option that says reservation days. So that'll either be at the top blue bar right here or it'll be on the hamburger menu on the left. So let me scroll down and find it. Here it is for me. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And uh, once you found it, you'll click on it and it should take you to uh, the term selector page. Um, yours should be mis uh, yellow if I'm not mistaken, which is fine. Um, and you can then go ahead and hit uh, continue or select. Uh, I believe yours will say select since yours is yellow. Um, I've already technically started it, so uh, mine still says continue. Uh, once you hit the select button, you'll be then redirected to the application. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. Awesome. So let me go ahead and skip over to the first page of the application. There we go. Alrighty, so the first page of the application uh, details that we are open for full capacity and it also has some very important information regarding COVID-19 and updated cancellation instructions, as well as the benefits to living on campus, which is located at the bottom of the page. Again, I go over this in much more detail in the new student application video, so uh, go check it out if you would like more clarification. Uh, we also have a lot more information on our website as well, so feel free to go over this. Um, this is all very, very important. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and hit save and continue. Awesome. So this next page, um, it says welcome. Uh, and at the bottom, that's the more important thing. So it shows you the timeline for reservation stays, which is as follows. Uh, so the application will open Monday, March 14th, and which depending on when you watch this video will be either today or it'll be uh, yesterday or a couple days in the past. Um, the, applica the application will temporarily go down on the 28th of March and will remain closed until Sunday, April 3rd. Um, that's very important. On April 4th, the application will reopen with a new section in it, which is room selection. Uh, you will then receive your time slot for the room selection days during that, uh, hopefully during that March 28th to April 3rd downtime or maybe even before. Um, definitely before April 4th, as that is when you, uh, when that first wave of students will be actually selecting their, their housing for the next year. Uh, room selection will remain open until Thursday, April 14th, which is also the final deadline for the overall reservations days process. Um, if you miss that April 14th deadline, you'll have to apply through the new student application and will not be able to keep your rate lock, and you will also have to move out permanently at the end of the spring 22 semester. Awesome. So once you understood this, you can go ahead and hit save and continue. Awesome. So this next page details uh, just some key license concepts, specifically the license fee period and the cancellation fees. Um, the following page will have the full license in depth, and we will also be releasing a license breakdown series on our YouTube in the very near future as well, because we want you to understand what you're signing before you sign. So we can go ahead and hit save and continue after you've read that. Again, this page details the license in full, so it's uh, the full 26 pages. Um, and at the bottom, you'll sign with your nine-digit student ID number. Um, please note that your application will not be considered complete if you do not sign this part, and it will actually not let you proceed until you have signed it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and skip over to the next page. Alrighty, so moving on, um, this next page has details uh, an updated COVID-19 guideline and vaccination information spread. Uh, please read through this and uh, check this box at the bottom once you have reviewed and understood the information. And once you have checked it, you can go ahead and hit save and continue. 
Um, so this next page is the personal details page, and it's mainly important imported from your Oasis. Um, if any information here is incorrect, please fix it in Oasis or contact the Campus Service Center. Uh, the most important thing to note here is the option for family housing at the bottom. If you do require it, uh, select yes and hit continue. Um, just uh, for brevity, I've already hit yes at the bottom, so we'll see the family housing section later on in this application. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the next one. Um, this page is the emergency contact page, which again will be mainly imported from Oasis. Uh, I believe if, it, if it's not, just go ahead and fill it out. Um, this uh, information is just mainly used if something happens to you, if we have to perform a welfare check within housing um, and things of that nature. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and skip over this section since it's obviously very private information. Um, obviously, I wouldn't want to see uh, your emergency contacts and I don't think you'd be interested in seeing mine. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the next section. Uh, and also, please note that sometimes the application will be slow due to stress on the server since many students will be logging on at the same time regardless of their time slots. So we thank you for your patience ahead of time. Um, so if you selected yes to the family housing uh, little blurb in the personal details sections, then this is where you will put your dependents. Um, so it, it says add new record. Uh, so that will be, you can add multiple. Um, see, and on this next page, uh, just go ahead and hit save and continue once you've added all your dependents. Um, this next page, you will um, then submit your uh, following documentation here for the proof of dependency. Um, it will, an actual uh, submission section will pop up if you uh, uploaded dependents on the previous page. I didn't have, obviously I, I do not have any dependents, so I didn't have anything to upload, but uh, once you've uploaded more records on the previous page, then um, the submission section will appear on this page. Um, the following documentation would be valid for proof of dependency. So that's either a state certificate of marriage, um, a copy of your declaration of domestic partnership, according to the California State Family Code 297, um, or uh, for dependent children uh, under 18, a copy of their birth certificate and or court documentation of custody stating that you or that individual is the primary caregiver. Um, again, we have more information on our East Campus Apartments webpage, so please feel free to go visit it for uh, more information on family housing qualification. Go ahead and hit save and continue once you uploaded that. This next page, very, very, very important. Um, I go over this next page in depth in our new student application video, but um, essentially here is what it is. Um, so basically, the university is not allowed to disclose any information regarding a student's record unless the student has given express permission or consent to release it. There are some very specific circumstances that we may release it, but these are very limited and not common whatsoever. Um, feel free to read through this and hit continue when you are done, or feel free to pause this video and actually go watch our new student application video if you want my full breakdown of this page. Um, otherwise, you can go ahead and hit save and continue. So this next page is very basic. It details um, the meningitis information, which is required by all California State Universities. So please read through it carefully and check the box at the bottom once you have reviewed it all. Then you can hit continue. Awesome. So next we have our housing accommodations page. Again, I go through this section by section in our new student application video. Uh, but here are some important items to note. Um, since the SDR accommodation process can be extensive, uh, make sure to start the process as soon as possible if you're seeking any type of accommodations and you're able to make an appointment with them on their website. Um, any service or emotional support animals must be registered with student disability resources before you bring them to campus. Not when you bring them to campus or after you bring them to campus, please register them before. Um, and all housing accommodations must be renewed every academic year, not semester. That's very important to note as well. Read through this or go back and watch uh, my new student application video for more information and hit continue when you are ready. 
Now we are on to GradGuard. Uh, if you haven't heard of this before, let me break it down for you. Uh, GradGuard is a university renter's insurance that we partner with to ensure all of our resident students are insured. Um, all of our students are automatic automatically enrolled in the program, and if you have any questions, please call them directly, and any cancellations of GradGuard are also done through them. Um, just read through this. It just shows you examples of uh, what coverage they provide as well. Um, so feel free to check the box at the bottom to uh, acknowledge your enrollment in it and um, go ahead and hit continue to step two. Um, so step two is just a very short financial resources page um, and it obviously gives you some financial resources such as our financial aid office or um, our, cal our, our cost calculator to ensure you are financially prepared for your future on-campus experience. Um, after you have viewed these resources, go ahead and hit save and continue. Awesome, so uh, this short page, um, Actually, no, this is not a short page. This page will ask you for your room preferences. Um, keep in mind that you'll be manually selecting your space um, in the second part of the application that's coming soon, also known as selection days. But um, this is important for uh, more data collection uh, for what is most desired on campus, whether that would be our East Campus spaces, our North Quad spaces, promontory spaces, um, our Area 2 residence halls. Um, this is just um, why you are being asked to list uh, room preferences. Um, this is also uh, just important in case there is a wait list and students need to be manual manually assigned. Um, there hasn't really been a wait list in the past, but if there is a booming population in the future on campus, there may be a wait list. Let's see. Um, at the bottom of the page, you'll be asked if you're interested in a super single. Um, if uh, you are then hit yes if you are not then hit no uh, I'm just gonna get I'm just gonna hit yes um, I go over what a super single actually is in our new student application video but essentially um, it's just a uh, a chance for you to buy out the other spaces in um, a shared room space um, so that it effect effectively becomes a single but it is a, a lot more expensive since you're essentially just buying two spaces at this at the same price for the for the whole academic school year Go ahead and hit save and continue and uh, now we're on to our meal plan page. Uh, please note that you must select a meal plan regardless of whether you plan to live in an area that does not require a meal plan. Um, at the bottom, uh, you'll be able to uh, opt out of a meal plan if you plan on living in an area that does not require one. Uh, please read this question very carefully because the wording sometimes trips up students. Um, I'm just going to read the question and it ho will hopefully make sense. So if you are assigned to an area that does not require you to have a meal plan, would you like to opt out of having a meal plan? Some students accidentally misread this question and press and select no. Um, and then that locks them into their meal plan that they select above. So if you do not plan on living in an area that requires a meal plan, um, please hit yes if you want to opt out. And if you do not want to opt out, hit no. If that makes sense, hit save and continue. Next, another very important page. Um, this next page details the upcoming rates for the 2022-23 year. Although they're not explicitly stated in the application, we have hyperlinked um, the new rates for the 2022-2023 academic year uh, on our website. Um, so please look at the rates on the website if you haven't already. And the most important thing at the very bottom of the page is if um, the application will ask you if you want to stay opted in or opted out of your rate lock. Um, the reason we ask this is because the rates for uh, the 2022-23 year have actually been decreased. Um, so you'll have the chance to either opt out of your current rate lock. Mine is from 2018-2019. Uh, um, so I have a slightly different rate than the ones this year. So if I were to still continue my education and live on campus, I would most likely select to stay opted into the rate lock. Uh, but if you want to um, actually get these lower rates for the next 2022-23 year, um, you'll be able to select, I would like to opt out of your current rate lock and receive the new academic year rates. Um, 
I'm just going to go ahead and uh, select yes. But if you do hit no, then you will be receiving that new rate. And please, please, please go ahead and um, check out those new rates on our website and really just compare whether you want to um, start fresh or you want to keep your old rate lock uh, just for safety reasons. Um, so if you uh, select your option here, go ahead and hit save and continue. Awesome. So we're pretty much almost done. We have about two sections left. Um, so this, this page has basically asked you to submit your application. But what if I told you there was another pathway to this application? Um, and keep in mind, this is only specific to students currently living in East Campus. So if you're currently living in East Campus, um, early on in the application, you'll see a page asking you if you want to stay in the same space as you are right now. Uh, we'll throw some screenshots on the screen right now, and we'll also go through them. So first, if you are a current family licensee, you are required to select yes for the same space request. If you are interested in staying in East Campus for a summer housing, you must also select yes. Um, if you say yes to the same space, you will not be eligible for any roommate groups, including making your own. So please make sure you want to stay in your same space. Uh, please also note that you will be notified well before the selection days if your same space request has been approved or not. Um, I've also included some more screenshots of what the room preferences page will look like if you selected yes to this request. Other than that, that's it. We'll go back to the application now. So once... Um, you're ready to submit your application. Go ahead and hit submit. Awesome. And then it'll show you your application status. Um, so congratulations. You've successfully submitted the first part of the reservation days application, and you should be receiving your selection days time slot very, very soon. Uh, we're so excited to have you on campus for this next academic year. If you have any questions, I've included three points of contact above my camera. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your fellow otters. And also, leave a comment down below if you feel like it. Um, that's, it for me. Uh, that's it for me today, otters. So let's all have a fantastic reservation days.